I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't sold on MJF at the very beginning, but it was his program with Glass Bones Punk that made me really see him as a truly generational talent. A bona fide draw that can hold his own with one of the best on the mic. And it's not only his expressions and his selling, but his antics. MJF was a real one, and his bidding war 2024 gimmick was legit. Between November of 2021 and the end of 2023, we watched MJF grow on to become a tentpole star in AEW. He can wrestle, he can sell, he can talk, he has the look, he has the confidence. He is the total package to be a generational star. MJF can be one of the most detestable heels on the roster, and in just one year, he became a man that people actually cheered for. He's a complicated character, and it wouldn't call him a face, but the crowd definitely is cheering him. In July of 2023, we had the formation of one of the most unlikely tag teams in recent history, the Brochachos. It was a great idea with a lot of fun execution, and we got some great storylines out of it, but it felt like MJF lost his edge. He no longer had that scumbag killer instinct he had earlier in the year. His Iron Man match with Brian Danielson and his Four Pillars Fade Forward were both amazing and masterclasses in unconventional heel work. At World's End, MJF lost the title and lost his best friend. He seemingly lost everything, along with an injury that would take him out of action for quite some time. Since then, AEW felt like it was limping on. It was in a funk it had to go through to shed the weight of the controversies and the bad booking of the previous year. Now look, I'm an AEW mark, but even I can see low ticket sales. I can see slumping ratings. Something was missing. Now, for the record, I completely believe that putting the title on Swerve was the right call. I completely believe Jack Perry being around is important. And I completely believe that Will Ospreay will raise the company's stock even higher. But I completely believe that AEW is entering its second life. Part of that is with the reintroduction of MJF, the wolf of wrestling. Ticket sales are climbing back up. Ratings have got a big bump off the back of Double or Nothing. Buy rates are up. I think we're in the middle of an uptick for AEW and MJF will play a large role in that. Right now, he's engaged in a mini program with Roosh and a man who's only wrestled four times in AEW in the last six months now feels like a hot heel because he's been in the ring with MJF. Even during his first promo back on Dynamite, MJF was sure to bury Rouge, but then he built him back up as a man who had beaten the best. But MJF is the best, period. He's proven that he won't be a face to be cheered, but a badass to be respected. Gone are the suits, and in are the jeans and leather jackets. Gone is the running away, and in are the fist fights and pull apart brawls. More proof that MJF gets it. He knows how to play a heel. A knows how to fight like a face. Hell, I want to make a prediction. If Raw was used to be known as the Triple H show and SmackDown was the Undertaker show, then maybe someday, Dynamite will be the MJF show and Collision will be the Will Ospreay show. Welcome back, MJF. We missed you, you scumbag.